Hey, what's up everybody? This is Matt Botus here from HeliDirect. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the new backup capacitor from HeliDirect. And first we're going to do a little unboxing video here. It comes in a, a nice little plastic case. Okay, snap it open here. Okay, you got your backup capacitor there. And you've got an instruction manual here. Nice padded foam. What is a capacitor? A capacitor is very similar to a battery, except it can't store as much energy, but it can charge and release energy much faster. Capacitors are generally very lightweight, so they will not add much weight to your model. Why do you need a backup capacitor? Well, just in case your power unplugs in flight, Let's say you have a poor solder joint that fails or um, just the connector unplugs. Sometimes that happens um, and you lose power. This capacitor is going to take over and provide your system with power so you can safely land the model. Um, if you have an ESC failure, sometimes ESCs do fail. Very unlikely these days, but it does happen. Uh, that failure happens. This backup capacitor will take over and allow you to land the model. Let's go over how to install this a little bit. All right, installing on the CGY760. This is the Futaba unit. You want to use the elevator two port. And first thing you want to do is plug in your Futaba programmer into the programming box port. First, you're going to want to go into the programming box settings. Press the enter key. and press the up arrow. Go to the SBUS basic menu. Scroll down until you see elevator port two. You wanna set this to a channel that you're not using. Right now I have mine set to channel 16. And as you can see, you can select pretty much any channel you want. Set it to an empty channel. I'm gonna go ahead and use 16. And here you wanna set the frequency, which default, I'd probably just leave that at 285. In your transmitter, go ahead and go to the linkage menu. Go to the function menu. I set mine to channel 16, so go to page two and you'll see channel 16. Uh, is auxiliary one and you're going to want to set your switch so I've got mine set to switch D close okay so you have auxiliary one set to switch D so I'll confirm that it is working a okay, servo monitor here's channel 16 flipping switch D and it is working okay you can unplug your programming box and go ahead and plug in your backup capacitor into elevator port elevator 2. When you first plug it in you're probably not going to see any lights. What you're going to want to do is go ahead and flip the switch you assigned it to like so and you're going to see the red light light up and then you're going to see followed by that the blue light light up and there's a series of blue lights on this one. Once they're all the way charged, or once they're all the way filled up with blue lights, the unit is fully charged. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna simulate a power failure. So watch these lights. I'm gonna go ahead and simulate a power failure by unplugging the main battery. Main battery is unplugged. I'm gonna start moving the swash as if I'm controlling the battery or controlling the helicopter to land it. And what you'll see is slowly, those blue lights will dim. Until eventually the slosh stops moving. Now granted, there's no load on the servos, essentially because we're not flying this thing, but it's a decent simulation here to see how much time we have to land the helicopter after a power failure. Okay, that's it. Generally speaking, you're gonna have 30 to 45 seconds of flying time after a power failure 
to land your helicopter. Now, generally that's probably plenty of time depending on how high you are, what's going on, how quickly you can auto. But for the most part, that should be plenty of time to get your helicopter on the ground. So in my opinion, guys, this backup capacitor from Pulse is a must have. It's an insurance policy just in case anything happens. Usually nothing does happen, but sometimes it does, and this will ensure that you can get your helicopter safely on the ground. Lastly, I should mention, the backup capacitor is not going to power your motor, which means if you lose power, it's up to you to auto-rotate. If you do not know how to auto-rotate, there's no better time than now to start learning. Good luck, and most importantly, have fun. Direct!